Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Steve Morgan from the Tuning School. Today I'm here talking to you about proper placement of your narrowband O2 sensors and your wideband O2 sensors. Let's get started. So today we're gonna to start with tip one, keeping your primary O2 sensors. Your primary O2 sensors are generally your upstream O2 sensors located before pre-catalytic converter. So these are going to determine your fueling strategies for your vehicle. So remember, don't delete these. It's illegal and once you delete them, you pretty much have a race car. So tip two is gonna be narrow band placement. We're gonna to talk to you about where to put your narrow bands in your exhaust system. I'm holding here a factory manifold and the factory provisions for the, the narrow band sensor is your best bet for this style exhaust setup. You don't wanna to have to change that. I have here an aftermarket shorty header and most aftermarket header companies are going to have provisions in the merge collector for your narrow band O2s. That's a great location for them. Secondly, the wiring for a long tube header, if you have long tubes, is probably going to be short and you want to buy a quality aftermarket um, O2 wiring extension and try not to use butt connectors. Get a good O2 extension from any of your aftermarket companies that you trust. Lastly, I want to talk to you about placement in primaries. We've seen it to where some people like to put narrow bands in the primary tube. For your factory narrow band sensors, it's not a great idea. Your factory ECUs hate it. So what I'm talking about primary tubes Primary tubes start here at the head and run down to the merge collector. So if you try to weld a bung in here, factory ECU is not gonna like it. It's gonna see a lot of revision. It's just not a good idea. So be sure merge collectors, extensions, everything's gonna be good. Tip three, turbo setups can be tricky. What I mean by that is a single turbo setup can be tricky on your narrowband placement because both banks merge into one to run into a single turbo. What you want to do in this situation is be sure that you get, so let's say your driver's bank right past the collector or right in the collector and your passenger bank, say if your turbo is on the passenger side, you want to get it before the driver's side merges with the passenger side. That way you're getting a reading on the passenger side instead of where the two banks merge together. Now on twin turbo setups, it's easy and you would run them just like you would normally right in your merge collector because you have a turbo on each bank. So tip four, we're gonna be talking about proper narrowband placement in the exhaust pipe. What I could recommend is a 90 or a 45 degree angle. We have an image here from a Corvette. I'm gonna show you your exhaust comes from the primaries here and runs to your O2s. And in this exhaust setup, you'll see that this is placed, this narrowband is placed at a 90 degree angle right here. You, what you also can do is, I can change this and show you that a 45 degree angle will also work, but what we don't want is a, you're, you don't want to locate your sensor straight down, let's say here. If you put your sensor here, what's gonna happen is you're gonna collect moisture from condensation as your exhaust heats up. What that would do is when your moisture runs down the exhaust pipe and gets in the lowest point, it's going to run into that sensor and kill your narrowband sensor. And also, be sure if you have to weld a bung in your exhaust for your narrowbands, be sure the head of the sensor protrudes enough into the exhaust pipe that you get an adequate reading. Tip five, sometimes your narrowbands aren't going to work. In some extreme situations or race situations where you're running open headers, your factory narrowbands to your factory ECMs are not going to read well at idle and part throttle. Right here I have an example of a rock bouncer with open headers. So in this situation, you can't use a narrowband at idle or part throttle because it's going to get the fresh air dilution and it's going to skew your readings to your narrowband. Best thing in this situation when you have an aftermarket or an open header setup is to use an aftermarket ECM that runs uh, y bands at all times to where you can program when to start at what RPM to start using the Y band. So tip one for Y bands is to know when to use them. 
Wide bands are a AFR sensor that read in a wide range. Unlike a narrow band, it reads in a narrow range. You will use a wide band sensor for tuning at wide open throttle or for any power enrichment situations. Some factory vehicles, as in the Hellcat and the Ford Coyote based vehicles, come with factory wheel wide band sensors. For your GM vehicles, you're gonna to need to install one to tune wide open throttle. So tip two is to know when to use a tailpipe sniffer or an exhaust bung. So the easiest way is just to screw your wide band into a tailpipe sniffer, run it in the tailpipe of the car, do your tuning from there. But what you have to remember is when you use the tailpipe sniffer, your exhaust, your AFR readings are going to be roughly a half a point leaner at the tailpipe. So if you use a O2 bung that is welded in, we recommend six inches past your header collector, it's going to read dead on. Now what you can also do is on vehicles that have pre and post narrowband O2 sensors, is you can unscrew a post O2 sensor, run your wide band in there, do your tuning and testing, and then when you get done, be sure to replace that narrowband O2 sensor that you took out. So tip three, turbos are still tricky. So if you place your wide band in the exhaust system before the turbo, the back pressure of the turbo can affect your AFR readings. We recommend placing your wideband sensor after the turbo, which can also be tricky because once the exhaust goes through the turbo, that can skew the readings as well. And remember, don't place your wideband too close to the end of your exhaust system. Make sure you have at least 18 inches of exhaust before it gets to fresh air to make sure your sensor is reading correctly. So tip four is gonna be wideband placement. And like we mentioned earlier when we were talking about narrow bands, it's gonna be exactly the same. We have an illustration here of a wide band or narrow band in the exhaust right here. You wanna place that wide band 90 degrees or 45 degrees in exhaust, just like your narrow band, so you don't get the moisture from the condensation running down in the sensor and killing the sensor. And you wanna make sure on most wide bands, you're gonna weld a bung in, and if you do, weld your bung in, be sure that the tip of the sensor protrudes enough into the exhaust pipe to where you get a good reading. So tip five is optimal wide band position should be six inches from the merge collector. And as you see here, we have a merge collector with the narrow band installed. And what you would do is you would take a weld in O2 bung and weld that in your exhaust pipe, 90 to 45 degree angle, six inches from this merge collector to give you the best reading. All right, guys, thanks for watching. For more high-performance tuning knowledge, follow us on social media, and as always, stay tuned.